Hey everyone, it's Derek here with Moist Sauce Productions and today we're taking a quick look at the 2019 Audi, or sorry, Audi Q5. And this is the 2.0 turbo. Uh, we're gonna see how it does. Everything's in dynamic. And we're gonna see what it's got. So, it's got a pretty decent amount of torque. I wouldn't say the power is, it's not a lot of power, let's just, let's just say that. And to be honest, like, I don't believe that this particular segment is looking at power. We're not talking about the SQ5. We're not talking about the Megane Turbo or the Macan Turbo. And we're not talking about the Stelvio Quadrifoglio. So this is more of the small SUV luxury class. And this particular car starts out at around MSRP $43,000. It's a pretty small car. It's around uh, 183 inches lengthwise. The exterior was refreshed in 2018. It looks pretty nice. It looks standard. It's, it's not, you know, something crazy and it's not something that I would really lust after. It's, it's okay. It's, it's nice looking. It's not particularly attractive in my opinion. All the other cars that are in this class, it doesn't stand out from anything, I don't believe. Exterior, not the greatest thing in the world, but not terrible either. I, I, I like the way that it looks. I'm just saying that overall, I would not pick this particular car because of the looks. Let's talk about the interior. Interior is pretty good. I like this particular trim. I believe this one's around, uh, starts off at around forty-five to $50,000 because it has the Bang & Olsen system. It has the um, 360 camera um, and it also has like, you know, heated and cooled seats. And I think pretty much this is the top of the line Q5 that you can get. And that's around 50 grand. So, um, and it also has the uh, lovely uh, sunroof, which um, is basically the entire top of the roof. And yeah, I really love that feature. I, I basically tell my wife, like, if we get an SUV, it has to have this feature. Like, this is the one main thing that it needs to have. Also, talking about this here, the uh, visor test, it passes. Hashtag straight pipes. The MMI system that it has here is basically basically the same that it's always been. Um, the main changes that I've seen since I've seen uh, the older interiors of Audi's cars is that it has this main LCD um, screen in the front here, which goes the entire speedometer. Um, you have uh, some light gauges on the side here, which isn't part of the screen, so it's not the same. Like, So if the screen goes out, this technically won't go out. If the bulbs go out, then that might go out too. Um, but the fuel gauge is not part of that, and also the uh, the uh, temperature gauge of the uh, oil temp uh, is not part of that either. So um, that's good when you talk about like sort of a reliability standpoint. I mean, you really want to know your gas gauge all the time. But it has navigation here, and it has Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, so that's something that's really nice to have. I would say one thing that sounds pretty good, and I'm pretty positive that. It has an intake that's, uh, you know, throwing in some sound so that you can hear um, some more of the intake sound. Um, but yeah, overall the interior is pretty nice. I was kind of surprised with some of the hard plastics that they use. Um, I mean, I'm not saying like this isn't a Rolls, a Rolls Royce or a Mercedes. So like Mercedes is really known well for their uh, interior qualities. I don't think uh, Audi and uh, uh, is, is really known for that necessarily. Um, it is known to be somewhat decent, but I think this is taking some of the hard plastics from Volkswagen and throwing it in here. Like the glove box is literally really, really hard plastic. So that was kind of interesting to me. And uh, the parts around, um, like around this uh, wood trim here, um, below it, uh, right around where the um, you know, the AC controls are 
uh, the climate controls are and heated seats and cooled seats and what have you. And it does have heated and cooled seats, which is also really nice to have. The interior, it has a lot of the features that one would want in 2019 or closing in on the end of 2019. And it has, um, you know, a uh, wireless charging station here. Yeah, it really has all the things that you would want. USB plugs, it has a little slot here for, I guess you would put your phone in here. I don't, I don't really understand what that's for. But yeah, it has a button for basically everything, which is nice to have because nowadays where things are switching off of a bunch of buttons and you still use it through this MMI system that it has here, which is now sort of a, a trackpad sort of thing. Um, but you also have the dial here too to go back and forth and it has a nice clicky tactile feel and sound um, to do like the radio, navigation, uh, your, your phone. The weird thing is like this gear shift, um, it's a little bit weird. It's a little bit more similar to uh, how uh, BMW has their system, um, which is you know a button for park and then um, there's a shift knob which you basically push in and then you move it to the specific gear that you want to be in. To move it to sport you basically push it to the right and then you're in there. And the seats are really really comfortable. They're pretty, uh, some people might not like them from a standpoint of they're pretty firm but uh, I think this is the nice in between of being firm and soft at the same time. Uh, so that's really nice and the bolsters come up pretty nicely. Um, so if you're a bigger person you may or may not like this, um, but they're very comfortable for my purposes. And I also really like the steering wheel. I like the uh, material that it has, and uh, I, I think inside here there's a little bit of plastic. So there's a little bit of silver in here um, with a, it looks like an aluminum trim, but I'm pretty sure it's uh, nice and uh, plasticky. Um, but the shape of it I like. Um, and the grips uh, I do like as well. It's a pretty thin steering wheel. And then I do like uh, all the buttons that you have here. They're pretty clear and cut and concise. Right side's volume, and then uh, you got your clickers to switch um, to the next song and pause and play. And it's also switching off, off and on. Um, it has the auto start stop, which I find quite annoying, but EPA does this to save, you know, one or two uh, miles per gallon, so, uh, it is what it is sort of thing. Um, but yeah, it has all features that you would want. Basically, if you're thinking of it, it probably has it uh, with the exception of like massage seats. It does not have massage seats. It has this LCD screen here, which displays, you can have the map here and the map here, but it'll also uh, show you your radio stations um, and then go to different media um, if you're plugged in via um, you know, Bluetooth or if you're plugged in um, through the wire. Rear seat room is pretty good. Um, I have a ton of room behind uh, a seat that is set for myself. Um, just just a, a boatload, boatload of room. So that's really nice. Um, I would say uh, also for the hatch, something that was mentioned to me uh, that's kind of annoying is that it'll open with the key fob but it will not close with the key fob, which is super annoying. And comment down below if you can actually do that and, and we're just not pressing the right sequence. Um, but basically, holding it, pressing it once, uh, will not close the hatch. Um, you have to go up and tap it, or actually when I was trying to uh, close it from in the driver's seat, it actually wasn't closing either. So that was an issue that I saw. Um, so it, it, that should be something that you can do, I think, uh, and it's pretty standard. Or, you know, like a foot thing underneath it. Uh, for 2019, I feel like a luxury SUV, it should have that capability. Rear seats have the uh, window shades, um, which is nice to have. And then finally, uh, they have two USB charging cables back there. And they also have um, like climate control as well. So it's nice to have that in a, uh, in a car just in general. Let's talk about the performance. Let's talk about, you know, this car as a uh, quote unquote, you know, driver's car. Um, so it does have uh, Audi's uh, Quattro system, which is uh, very similar to, to Volkswagen's Halidex system. So I, I believe that the Quattro system is based off of that, which is primarily a front wheel drive uh, system, which is kind of a bummer. The reason why I say it's a bummer is because these cars traditionally 
understeer and you can feel it in this car. Something that I don't really like in the steering feel is that it's on dynamic um, and the steering wheel is super light, like just ridiculously light. So performance wise, it's got the uh, Audi's S-Tronic uh, transmission and it does have paddle shifters here, which is nice. Um, the gear shifts are pretty seamless. On the screen, it looks like that it clicks down. But there might be a slight delay. Not too much horsepower, but a, a pretty large amount of torque. And these engines are very tunable, so if you are into that, you can certainly tune this engine. Um, and put like a stage one tune or something like that and it'll open it up a lot. Like it doesn't handle that bad when you're in a turn, um, like a long sweeping turn. But like if it's a, like a really quick direct turn, it's kind of, it's kind of very dull. And uh, this, like the steering is so light that you turn it and then you want it to automatically turn back and it's not moving at all. If you're just driving this around town, you know, not wanting to hoon it around. It gets decent gas mileage, but um, you know, with forced induction, like it's it's sort of a mixed pie. It just really depends on how you drive it. Brakes are pretty good. Uh, four wheel disc brakes, obviously. Looks wise, I think I would go with the Porsche or the Alfa Romeo Stelvio. Uh, I think those look the most interesting in my opinion. Overall, like I, I think it's pretty good value and uh, yeah, it's definitely a good car. Um, and the 2.0 engine that it has in here is like bulletproof. Uh, they've been using it forever. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next video.